Welcome aboard the Bitcoin Express. My name is Chase. Let's get to it. This video is going to be short and simple explaining what Bitcoin is at a fifth grade level. When someone asks you, what is Bitcoin? Why is it so valuable? Of course, this isn't something you can fully explain to someone in one sitting. It would take weeks, months, maybe even years to truly explain what Bitcoin is to somebody because before even understanding Bitcoin, a person has to understand the current monetary system, how government fiat dollars work. And it can get pretty complicated. It includes terms such as fungibility, durability, divisibility, scarce, decentralized. These are terms you can't teach someone in one setting. But if someone were to ask you, what is Bitcoin? Why is it so valuable? You can give them this simple answer. Bitcoin is valuable because it's the first digital item that cannot be copied. And I'm going to repeat that again. Bitcoin is valuable because it's the first digital item that cannot be copied. You see, prior to Bitcoin, anything that was digital, anything on a computer, it can be copied. It was not scarce, it was not rare. Just like you go on a computer and you could do copy and paste, that's how easy it is to copy things. So over time, people developed ways to prevent this from happening and they added some measures that would make it what they thought impossible or more difficult to copy a digital item. But of course, as time progressed, people figured out ways to copy digital items. And this is why digital currencies prior to Bitcoin never succeeded. Bitcoin was not the first attempt at a digital currency online. We had B money, Bitgold, Hashcash, but the problem is they couldn't solve this problem, the, what's called the double spend problem. There was no way for them to ensure that this digital item cannot be copied. I mean, think about having a money online where someone can just copy it at will. It would make no sense. So Bitcoin was the first digital item to achieve this. It can't be copied. Sometimes you'll have people ask you, maybe they know a little bit about Bitcoin and they'll say, I don't get it. It's magical internet money, it's monopoly money. When someone uses this term magical money or monopoly money, they use it because it implies that the asset in question can be created at will, like magic out of thin air. When you have magical money or monopoly money, it's not rare, anyone can create it. But Bitcoin is the total opposite of monopoly money or magical money. It takes a lot of work and effort to produce a Bitcoin. And one day, there will only be 21 million Bitcoin. That's the limit. There will never be 21 million Bitcoin and one more. It's just going to be 21 million Bitcoin and it's hard to produce. A more appropriate question would be, is a US dollar or is a British pound, are fiat dollars magical money or monopoly money? Because with these currencies, they actually can be created magically at will. And we saw that especially in 2020, trillions of dollars printed around the world. So this is the first part. Again, you can't explain everything to someone right away what Bitcoin is. So that's a simple explanation. Digital item, the first one that cannot be copied. So now that Bitcoin has been created, can other projects copy them? This is a question someone might ask you on the follow-up. They'll say, you know, Bitcoin, okay, it can't be copied. But I heard there are other digital currencies that are similar. They have like a, ma you know, a max supply. There'll only be 1 million. There will only be a 100 million. Isn't it the same thing as Bitcoin? Why doesn't it have the same value as Bitcoin? Or maybe someone might refer to one of these loyalty reward programs at a store. For example, Subway has a rewards program where they offer tokens and you can use them to buy items and other franchises and companies do something similar. But the problem here with these other projects or these companies that say we have this limited, rare, scarce coin, the problem is when they say that, it's just a promise. It's not a guarantee. When it comes to a smaller project, maybe that only has 50 people working on it, or a company such as Subway, all it takes is for one person, maybe two people, to make a decision and change everything about that project. If Subway, for example, said we're only going to make 1 million coins of this token for their restaurant, all it takes is the CEO, maybe the CEO and the vice president to decide, you know what, we're going to make 2 million. 
Same thing with other cryptocurrency projects that follow a similar model of Bitcoin. It's a small group of people and it's easier to come to an agreement to make a change. When you have just two people making an agreement, it's pretty simple. Imagine you're working on a project for work or for school. If you're the only one doing the project, you have all the say. You can change the project, what you want to do, how you want to do it at any time. If it's you and another person, it's still pretty easy. It's easy for two people to come to an agreement. But what happens as the network expands? What happens when you have 50 people trying to make an agreement? It's possible, I mean, it, it usually works out, it's difficult, but eventually, usually you'll come to an agreement. But what happens when you have a thousand people or 10,000 people trying to come to an agreement to make a change to a system or to a protocol? It is nearly impossible. And that's the case with Bitcoin. Bitcoin has thousands of people securing it, securing the network. And the only way for there to be more Bitcoin, more than 21 million Bitcoin in the future or make copies to Bitcoin is to have majority of these thousands of people come to an agreement to make that change. But as the network grows larger, it becomes more impossible. It already is nearly impossible for there to be a change. So this is why Bitcoin is so valuable. It is the first digital item that cannot be copied. And then it is guaranteed to stay that way. Like we said, there are other projects now that are trying to do things similar to Bitcoin or even a company that tries to create some rare token. But the problem is they don't have large enough, a large enough network to ensure that it is secure. Remember, when there's one person controlling a project or a token or a company or two people, even five, it's very easy to make a change. But when you have thousands of people securing the Bitcoin blockchain, the Bitcoin network, it is guaranteed that Bitcoin will stay a rare item that cannot be copied. I hope you found value in this video. If you have any questions, put them down below. This video is just to keep it simple. If you have some more technical questions about how this works behind the scene, put them down below and I'll be certain to answer you. Thank you for listening and I'll see you next time.